Hey friends, it's Carol, Saltbox Stitcher, back for um, a jam-packed episode number. Um, how old were you on your last birthday? 29. <laughs> the truth. 39. <laughs> Closer. 70? The new 60. 70. And episode 70. Okay, smart Alec. <laughs> but I look 29, right? Yes. Did I answer that correctly? Go away. <laughs> How is everybody? I hope you're doing well. It is uh, Saturday, May 21st, my grandson's ninth birthday. And we called him this morning to say happy birthday. <laughs> what are you doing today? He's going to a friend's birthday party. <laughs> I said, on your birthday? You're going to a friend's birthday? Yeah, his birthday was yesterday. So the big party's tomorrow at the ballpark. Um, the AAA, I think it's AAA. It's either AA or AAA team that we have in... Jacksonville, which is the Jumbo Shrimp. Now, if that's not an oxymoron, <laughs> the names of some of these uh, minor league teams is just hilarious to me, you know. But anyway, all of that is irrelevant, and we're just going to talk stitching. So um, I'm going to talk about what I've been working on, and then I'm going to talk about what I'm going to work on for the rest of May, maybe. I'm not maybe going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about what I might work on possibilities. How's that? And then I'm going to talk a lot about patriotic. I have some frame pieces I'm going to show you. I have my little dough bowl over here that came from the kitchen. And um, first I'll talk a little bit about, I love to collect houses. I have a big red house up there. This quilt, a lot of people ask me about whatever quilt's hanging here. This was part of a Jan Paddock girl gang club 2008 something like that but it's really simple it's just a nine patch offset with um, squares and then it has applique hearts and stars so and then this house is a hand-painted house that I bought uh, one year when I went to the Liberty Gathering it was hand-painted by Lynn Hosford she contributed a lot to the Needle Love books back in earlier days uh, 2000 early 2000s and um, it's hard to see, but it has like swirls here on the roof, has a hand-painted uh, bird. Um, let me see if I can turn it around a little bit with the flag. It's really cool. It's one of my very favorite things that I have. So it has a hand-painted, it has her initials, LH. It's all wood, has the bunting and the star, the birdhouse holes and I would never put this outside but has stars more bunting and then the roof has the kind of wavy lines so anyway it's one of my favorite things I have and I brought it all the way home from Kansas City and those none of the pegs on the birdhouses um, they all made it home and then I have a cute little Raggedy Ann and Andy that I've had for years. I don't even know where I got them. Probably a craft show. I used to do craft shows. So if you do craft shows and sell things, then you also walk around and see what other people have. And then you buy stuff. So you really don't make any money. <laughs> Story of my life. Anyway, um, first I'm going to be talking about what I've been stitching during the part of May. Now, on my last video, I showed you my first five days because I'm doing a five by five mania so I started with um, his eyes on the sparrow by heartstring samplery and I did five days on that and got quite a bit done so that was um, really enjoyable and I really want to get back to that at some point and then for the second five days I worked on Ann Grimshaw 1818 which is still available it's a chart by the scarlet letter and that's what it looks like. I know Kitten Stitcher has finished it. She even did some um, notebooks or something with, or stickers, I can't remember, but she used the image from that. And she did it in black. Um, I started it around the same time, which was 2018 because of the 200 years in Grimshaw, 1818. 
I'm gonna try to hold them longer. And then here's my progress. I did share this on Instagram. Sometimes I don't share on Instagram because I think, oh, I'll just show that on my video and then I'll post it afterwards on Instagram and then I forget. <laughs> I'm not a very good social media person. Anyway, this is how far I got on Ann Grimshaw. Can you see it? So what did I actually finish? Ooh, there's two threads on there. Oh, well. So I uh, filled, there was a leaf down here that I filled in. I had fill, I filled in, I already had the outline, but I filled in that Quaker motif. I filled in this Quaker motif. Um, I did this leaf right here. I did this, filled in that Quaker motif. Let's see what else. Um, oh, there's a lot of threads on here. And then I did, um, I think I finished, I, I didn't have all the way done on the alphabet. And then I finished this one and this one. So I, I did probably like six motifs and then filled in a couple. I love it. It's on, um, okay, this I've had a while. It's 36 count pecan butter by Lakeside. Well, I started in 2018 and I think I'd had the linen for a little while. I have a really good friend who's worked at a couple cross stitch shops and she's really taught me a lot about linen so years ago before lakeside was like gold you had to dig for it <laughs> paying for lakeside um before all of the frenzy of how great lakeside linen is it you could get it you know um i think i bought this at our local shop um anyway you could get it So that's where I am on Ann Grimshaw. So I worked five days on that. Felt good about my progress. It was one of those ones I was like, hmm, it'd be nice to keep working on this. So a little bit of my goal of doing this is to get some progress on some of these and kind of remind myself. <laughs> I don't really need to be reminded, but kind of to refresh in my memory on these so that it's like, oh yeah, I forgot I started this. I've worked on it and I really enjoy it. And so it kind of motivates me to be able to want to get back to it. Um, so after I did Ann Grimshaw, and this is my, I don't have a lot, I'm not a stickery. I, I have some stickers, but I don't always sticker up my <laughs> book of days. So then I had a fail. Everybody has a fail occasionally, right? So I had a fail. So, oh, and on Ann Grimshaw, I'm using Gloriana Antique Black on that pecan butter. I showed those last time. I think I was in the middle of stitching that last time. So then for the second five days, which would have been, okay, what did I do with my book here? The 6th through the 10th. I worked on Ann Grimshaw and on the 11th, I thought, okay, it's time to start on a new whip for five days. So I thought, well, I'm going to get out Plantation Sampler. Now Plantation Sampler is by Canterbury Tales. I don't have any information other than, this is my working copy, that maybe at some point, you know, McKenna's reproducing a lot of these older out of print. I have no idea. I'm just off the top of my head. I don't know if she'll eventually get to some Canterbury, but this is Plantation Sampler. I think the first time I saw it in person was at Tanya the Scarlet House at her house when I went for summer school in 2019. I had seen the chart, but seeing it in person, I was like, oh, I have to do this. So then I searched, it was my unicorn for a while, and I finally had a really nice lady. I asked her if I could borrow it. She said, sure. But then later she said, she said, you can just have it. So I have Plantation Sampler. 
And I have, I had quite a bit finished, but I'm not gonna continue on this linen. So you'll see on the, the front of it that it's kind of a, you know, grayish, brownish linen, okay? I can't help the glare because it's that's the actual chart. It's like a photograph. It's got shiny. So I started it on uh, vintage, I think it's called Vintage Beeswax by R&R. &R. Um, 36 count. And this is how far I, I was. So I was quite a ways. And then I even have a thread hanging, so. So when I picked it up again to do five days of mania, I started working on the house. And I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. The house is too light. It's too light. And I believe the convert, I don't really know exactly where I got the conversion. It's mostly NPI. But the colors for the house are DMC. So some of it's DMC, some of it's NPI, which is Needlepoint Ink Silks. So the DMC is what the house is um, stitched with, and it's the original colors. So to me, it should show up fine, but it doesn't. Look at it. It just is like, it's just gone. Now you can see the roof a little bit, but the actual house in the blue, I don't like it. <laughs> when you get to a certain age you can just say I don't like it <laughs> without being rude of course and I have quite a bit done I'm gonna I mean either, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna continue so I really want to stitch this I'm not gonna give up so I decided to contact Tanya because I, well, first of all, I went to her Instagram feed and one of her pictures, and I, my phone's over there, so I can't show you, but on her, on Tanya, the Scarlet House, on her feed, at some point during, I think, um, Know Your Needleworker or whatever, she had posted a couple of her favorite samplers and Plantation Sampler was one of them. So I was able to see the colors that she used and she is very similar. It may have even been her conversion. I don't know where I got the conversion. So I sent her a message and I said, what linen did you use for plantation sampler? Keep in mind, the picture, if you're gonna go by the picture, is this grayish brownish. Oh, we're gonna be here a while today because I'm already <laughs> almost 15 minutes in and I haven't even gotten past my second thing to show you. <laughs> Chill, Carol. So she answered me back and said she used Lakeside Lentil. Lentil. Now she used 45 count. I didn't have any 45 count. I did have some 36 count, but I didn't have a piece that would work. So, for a second here, time out. Anyway, I'm stitching my... Um, here it is, and I'll show you this in a minute. But I'm stitching my Jane Atkinson on lentil. So a good substitute might be Alcott. I didn't want to use my <laughs> Alcott because that's by Needle and Flax, and I'm sort of saving some of those. Not that Plantation Sampler isn't special enough. I could do that, but I thought, well, let me see if I have something that I can use that I don't mind using up. So I went in my deep, dark stash of linen and I pulled out three, diff three or four different things. So let me see how it looks on the camera because I'm really curious. So this is lentil. Now it's 40 count, but and 45 might have been different. This is uh, fiber on a whim wheat, which is probably what I'll use. This is kind of hard to do. Of course it is, Carol. So here's fiber on a whim wheat. Very close. 
This one is Tea Leaves by Color and Cotton. A little lighter, but still has a little bit of green flavor. This is the lentil. This is the um, Fiber on a Whim Wheat. Um, this is Fiber on a Whim Latte. You're like, uh, we're not seeing any of these. So, latte, uh, tea leaves, wheat, lentil. See? See how the wheat is the almost the best? And then the last one I have is really pretty light. And I'm not sure what it is. Oh, yeah, I am. Fiber and whim, milk and honey. So let's see if I can do all this. See, the milk and honey is the very last one over here by my little finger. It's pretty light. So I'm going to go with Fiber on a Whim Wheat. And like I said, I could use Alcott, but to me, this is just like wonderful. So I'm going to restart Plantation Sampler. I'm not sure when. And these are the colors I'm going to use. And actually, I don't. I don't mind okay that's my working cup I don't mind see there's there's a whole line of let me see where it is right here see this whole line this whole inner border kind of let me see if it shows better on this side and it's it's really ghosty right along here that doesn't bother me and I had some I've had a couple of people ask me what ghosty means well it means the color of your floss matches your linen color, and so therefore it doesn't show up. It's like a ghost, you know, you can see right through a ghost. Because <laughs> I've seen so many in my lifetime. <laughs> I don't mind if there's an inner border. I don't even mind if there's letters in an alphabet that ghost. But I don't want a house that doesn't show up. I mean, <laughs> what, is that a haunted house? Because it's full of ghosts? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to use Fiber on a Whim Wheat. It's a piece I have. I do know that some of these dyers have, you know, variations in their color. You might order wheat and it might not be exactly the same. But for me, coming out of my stash, wheat works. And so that is what I'm going to do, plantation sampler. And I think all of the colors. And if you would look at Tanya's uh, Instagram, you would see her plantation sampler is done on a lighter color. Once I made the decision, then I'm fine with restarting it. It's that interim time, that interim time where you're like, I don't like this. What am I going to do? I worried about it one night. I couldn't sleep. It's like, okay, Carol, this is a little ridiculous. When it's interrupting your sleep, it's a little ridiculous. So that's the story I have on Plantation Sampler, and I am happily going to restart that at some point. So let me put all this back in a project bag because if I don't, it'll get lost or separated. Anyway, so it took me one day to figure out I didn't, I wasn't going to continue stitching on plantation sampler. So I wasted a day of my five days. I didn't waste it. I just moved it ahead. So the next thing, which always works for me when I'm stressed about stitching, what do you do? Go to a therapist? No. Do you take medication? No. What is the one thing you do when you're stressed about your needlework? You stitch Blackbird. Because Blackbird is comfort stitching. It's like mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> comfort food. This is comfort stitching. So I went to a whip that I had started because this is my whole mania thing. It's about picking up whips that I haven't worked on for a while and giving them each five days. And decided to pick up Come Into My Garden by Blackbird. Now, I got my original pattern at Country Sampler um, during at 2019 during Stitch Camp. Barb was there, so 
I don't know if she did a lot of retreats after that, but that's one of the last time I saw her. So you can see on the picture, it's not finished. And she was just like laissez-faire, like, well, I didn't finish stitching it, but I went ahead and printed the pattern for y'all. So it wasn't actually, I don't think it was part of our kit. Maybe the pattern was, I can't remember. But Country Sampler had it kitted for us to purchase, so I did that. And at some point, I started it. So, um, this is my mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> and I got quite a bit done on it. I'm really happy. So that's the pattern, and here's where I am on Come Into My Garden by Blackbird. When I picked it up, I did not have all the flowers on the top of the border finished. I had some of them started. I did not have the alphabet finished. I had a few letters put in. I had started the house, but that was it. I think I might have had it outlined. Are you seeing it? Okay, let me get a little bit closer. You know, it's really hard until I actually see the playback of this to see if I've held it long enough and close enough. So this is Blackbird come into my garden. Now, I don't really have, I'd say I'm more than half done. So I have to do this basket, then I'm gonna put my name. For a while I thought about putting Barb's name. And then what's on this side is pretty much mirrored on this side and then finish the, um, the flowers and the border. This is one that's a fantastic border. A couple videos ago, I talked about borders after Rachel from Needle and Flax. I'm sorry if I say names <laughs> and people are like, who's Rachel? <laughs> it's like, do you ever talk to a friend and they start mentioning relatives and like, and then Susie and Johnny came over and then they invited Cindy and Sue and who knew that they were all coming? And you're like, who the heck is Johnny and Cindy and Sue? <laughs> You know, most people would say, and then Johnny, my brother-in-law, brought Susie, his ex-wife. <laughs> you know, you get a little context. So, anyway. I can hear you! <laughs> He's in the bathroom brushing his teeth. <laughs> anyway, TMI. So that's where I am. I love the border. Love it, love it, love it. It's very fun to do. It's not tedious. So I have the border outline. I went down and did one of the birds. I've already finished the doodahs that are hanging doodahs that are around the bird. All those little, you know, four little stitches. So I'm really excited. I really didn't want to pass or, you know, give this one up. So definitely... Maybe August, I might get back to this, or maybe once Patriotic is, I'm done stitching Patriotic. The linen I'm stitching on was part of the kit, and that's uh, 36 Count Velt by Picture This Plus, which is pretty green. It's pretty green, or maybe it's Legacy, hold on. Hold please. It is, uh, da 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 da. I did find a, a couple things in the pattern that I thought looked a little different. Um, so I don't know how well she edited the pattern before she gave it to us. But the newer patterns that you would get now don't have all that. It's 36 count velt by Picture This Plus, which, bleh, Picture This Plus, which is pretty green. And these are the called for colors. They're very Blackbird. Blackbird to me is vintage pretty. That's how I describe Blackbird. You have pinks, you have blues, you have golds, but they're vintage, so they're not bright, they're not strong, they're just faded colors. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So I'm really happy that that was, you know, I hadn't intended to pick this one up as part of my uh, five by five mania, but once I did, I was like, oh yeah, this is Blackbird. This is comfort stitching. Uh, it is. I don't know. Did Brenda Laura coin that? I don't know, but it's comfort stitching. So, so then that was, where's my book here? 
I stitched on that the 12th through the 15th. No, through the 16th. 12, 13, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, yeah. Then on Tuesday the 17th, I was ready for another one, which would be my fourth one. And I decided to pick up my Jane Atkinson. I love this piece. I love this piece. This is another one that's a candidate. You might not think so, but for comfort stitching. This is by the Scarlet Letter, Jane Atkinson. Again, the shine comes from the, the picture. It's a photograph. Jane Atkinson. And I already mentioned I'm stitching this on, this is 40 count. This is a kind of a tight 40 count. It's by Lakeside, but I'm wondering if it's about a 42. I haven't measured, but I don't think it's 46. I don't think it's 46. It could have been a 45 because it's an older piece. And I know at one time they dyed 45, didn't they? Did I dream that? <laughs> no idea. Anyway, I made progress. Now, I'm going to continue stitching her until tonight. So I have another day of stitching on this one. So this is my Jane Atkinson. Okay, I'm gonna scroll up slowly. So in four days, now some of that time I spent stitching with friends. So, you know, I did some daytime stitching, but I got, I had through here, so I got all of this done in here. And I always want it to be kind of balanced. So on the other side, I did all of this. I still need to fill in the leaves there and I'm starting another big flower down here. Now, I can extend the, um, you know, it has this inner border right here, this line. I can in extend that, but there are some flowers that blend in inside the border. So I have to be careful not to just stitch away and then find out, oh, I should have. Have you ever done that though? Let's say it's in a leaf and you realize that you had um, stitched a, one stitch that was supposed to be a different color. I just stitched the right color on top of it. Now, if it was black and I'm stitching a white on top of it, sometimes that doesn't work. But if it's green and you're stitching brown on top of it, or if it's pink and you're stitching green on top of it, you'll never know. <laughs> Tip of the day. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is where I am, and I love this. Just love it. So I'm progressing. I'm not quite halfway as far as how long it's gonna be. But the colors are fabulous. It's a happy, happy stitch for me. Once I do the outlining, like this flower's outline, then I just go and I fill it in like this. You know, yesterday I filled in all of this while I was stitching with friends, Thursday, whenever. Um, it's just, I just really think it's enjoyable. And on that one, I'm using um, a Vera Soie, Soie d'Alger, which is the one that comes on the skeins. It's a little thicker than the a Vera Soie 103. I love it. It was kind of funny last night I was looking because one of the colors I know I'm going to have to use a lot is number 3714, and I don't have a whole lot left. Because I have a couple big flowers. And I have a little note in here. <laughs> Borrowed from Elizabeth Masterton, which is uh, Rachel from Needle and Flax has started. It's a scarlet letter. So when I go back to Elizabeth Masterton, I think I may need to buy a new skein. <laughs> if not before then. Or I got to look and see if I have them anymore. And this is one of the things I use these little. This was a gift. This uh, I have a this in a uh, stitch folk bag. What did I do with the bag? It's around here somewhere. What did I do with it? Anyway, I might have left it in my 
the other room. But, you know, it comes with these little needle book or whatever you want to call them. And uh, that's where I put my threads. While I'm, so if I only use part of a thread, and this is the, what I was talking about. I would love to be able to mark on here, but I would want it to be something that's not permanent, like that this is color 3714 and this is color whatever. So somebody suggested that I use a um, disappearing ink type thing. So I might I might try that on a piece of, because this is just like batting or fusible fleece. So I might try that on a piece of batting and see if um, it truly is erased or uh, um, disappearing. So then once I finish, I think I have something hidden under here. Once I finish stitching on Jane tonight, so then what's the next thing for the next five days? These are not set in stone because obviously I didn't even know I was going to pick up, come into my garden. I thought I was going to be working on plantation sampler until I decided I don't like it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm at a half hour. You might not see this video till Monday. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, this is a this is a pretty high possibility. This is Maria Selby Humphrey by Blackbird. I think this is still available. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I do know they did not stitch. Or the, it's a it's an antique sampler, and I don't think they actually stitched a reproduction. I think they just charted it and put it in the book because this is the antique. I have quite a bit done on this and I just might pick this up tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a lot of stuff going on with the birthday party and all of that. So, but I'll stitch tomorrow night. And I have quite a bit done on that. So um, I'm using the called for over dyed cottons, which are very, I've shown you a lot of these before, very neutral. Few, few blue to throw in there. So here's an example of a ghosty alphabet. That didn't bother me at all. But I have a real thing about a house that doesn't show up. So anyway, it, there's no over one. Even the verse is not over one. I'm stitching this on 40 count something. Looks like maybe Exemplar or light exemplar by leg side. Vintage. Not sure. So that might be something I pick up tomorrow. I don't know. Did I bring any other possibilities for what I might pick up that's a whip? I don't think so. Okay, so then once I've done my fifth one, then I can have a new start because I've been good. <laughs> I followed the rules, even though I don't like me telling me what to do. So um, I was looking for a Gloriana thread to kit up something. Oh, Scarlet House Harriet Passy, which was a new release. I don't have the pattern yet or I'd show you. I ordered it. Um, and I was looking for, th I think that's the one. Anyway, I was looking for a certain Gloriana and I pulled out a sampler. I think Rachel might have shown this. This is an out of print sampler, but again, maybe this is one that McKenna will, I have no prior knowledge that McKenna might re-release. And this one is called the 1809 Francis Eden Sampler. I love this. The first time I saw this was one of the gals from the Australia Cruel Goblin when they did like a little mini uh, retreat with you know however many they got together to stitch and somebody was stitching on this and I was like <laughs> gotta do that that was kind of a weird sound you can just edit that out I love this it's lighter and brighter but I love it at some point <laughs> I collected the Gloriana threads for it. And some of these are duplicated because some of them I was like, okay, that's what, it, I have a conversion. I'm not sure again where I got the conversion. I might know. I don't think it was the attic. Although I got the chart from the attic. It could have been, I don't know. I'm not gonna share the numbers. I'm just showing you 
there were a couple things that I was like, okay, I don't have that, but I have something close. So these are the colors. How about those? Wowza. Oranges, bright greens, pinks. Who am I? <laughs> Who am I? You know, that happens. Sometimes people get older and all of a sudden they start wearing these wild colored clothes. <laughs> You're like, Grandma, <laughs> where did all this come from? <laughs> you know, kind of like Maud. Was it Maud from uh, Golden Girls that used to wear kind of, anyway. <sighs> My friends will tell you, I'm. this is how I am. <laughs> it's like, okay. Go slow down, Carol. Um, I have a piece of Lakeside Vintage Bisque, which is a nice light linen. Look at how well all those show up. I just might start this. How funky is that? Once again, Francis Eden. Love it. It does the only place it has over one. And I, I don't know if you could find this. Again, I'm hoping that some point, I think we're all very fortunate that McKenna from 1884 Stitchery is beginning to be able to, and I don't know how she does the arrangement, whether it's with the museum, whether it's with whoever put it out originally, I don't have any idea. I've never talked to her about it. I do know I watch on Instagram and she will periodically post samplers that she is recharting and some of them were originally charted by hand so you have little you know somebody made little o's and little x's and little dots so to do them in computerized and be able to offer them to all of us is phenomenal i mean thank you thank you thank you mckenna as a sampler stitcher i am very appreciative anyway the only over one is this little tiny trailer at the bottom that um let me see if I can see what it says. It's something like, well, I read it the other day, and I was like, you could even leave that off if you really wanted to. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think my conversion is from the attic. I'm getting there. I just want to make sure I do it in order. Let's see, two, six. The heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, now much less the house that I have built. I love that. So I may I may go ahead and, and do the over one at the bottom because it's just that one little line. You can barely see it under that house. It's in red. So yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked. I could, I could do this. I, I could start this. Why not? I'm not getting any younger. But who is, you know? Then I pulled just a few other po possibilities, just in case I, you know, look at this and go, okay, that's something I want to stick with when I start it. And I don't know why I'm thinking of this now, but talking about sticking with things. And I'll, I'll explain. I'll explain the link here in a minute. Um, new floss tube is linen and scraps. Everybody needs to go watch. They had an introductory, then they had number one, and then I just got a notification last night. There's number two, so I'll be watching that this afternoon. Linen and scraps. The linen portion of it is um, Kathy Bourne, who is a uh, model stitcher. She's done models for the attic. I think she's done models for Hands Across the Sea. Phenomenal. So she is doing a floss tube with her neighbor, Molly, who is a he, tremendously talented paper, scrapbooking, all that kind of stuff, junk journaling and all that kind of stuff. And so they're neighbors and they're blending, you know, they're making floss books out of paper crafts. And now Molly, her neighbor, is starting to cross stitch. She has a different taste than Kathy. Kathy's more samplers. But anyway, Kathy said she's a monogamous stitcher. That's That was the link. I thought, I might want to start this when I can be monogamous. Oh, monogamous. <laughs> Kathy Bourne. That is how my brain works. I don't know if it's good or bad. 
it just is. But if I decide, okay, not the, not now, I'm going to start that later. Maybe that would be a great September sampler to start. The other one, since we're talking comfort stitching, is My Heart Can Rest by Blackbird. I love this. I love this. It's so cool. It's just Blackbird. Now this says 1842 Sarah Jane Hale, Anamosa, Iowa. You know, sometimes Blackbird will put, um, they'll take an antique, kind of retweak it to their style. So they have lots of hanging doodahs again. Those are those like fours or threes that they just kind of throw in there. There we go. You can see them. One's right above the basket. You know, they're the ones that you don't want to do because you do four stitches and then you got to figure out where to tie off your thread. Not tie off, but you know what I mean. Anyway, and then they'll put their own relative instead of whatever the antique girl's name. Uh, there's one that I have. I won't show you because I don't want to move the camera because I could mess things up. But there's one I have. It's uh, oh, Anna Lavinia. No, mine is Anna Lavonia and theirs was Hannah Lavinia. But Anna Lavonia was my mom's grandmother. My mom's grandmother, yeah. So anyway, you know, I could put somebody in my family, my heart can rest. I did get that kitted at some point. Maybe this was from the attic. It was the year Lindsay got cancer, and so I didn't go to the retreat, but I got all the kits because it was like last minute I canceled. So I have that. This is one of those ones that you're very tempted because you're like, okay, I'm only going to spend five or six. I could go into June and stitch on it. I, I know I could. But, you know, if I pick a smaller one, then maybe I can get a lot accomplished versus a big sampler like that uh, Francis Eden. The other one, Brenda has already started this. This was one of, if not my favorite, uh, release from market. Elizabeth Hunt, 1845 by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. And she tells you to kind of uh, over dye your flosses that have an, an asterisk, but I think that's just the DMCs. Maybe not all the D, but some of the DMCs. To do it um, like an in instant coffee to kind of dull them down. I don't think that's a big deal. So anyway, this is a possibility too, because this is beautiful. And Brenda has made a gorgeous start on it. So that was very inspiring. Brenda of Brenda and Laura. Brenda and the Serial Starter. And then I pulled out a few other ones that are possibilities. I want to start this one so bad. Again, here's another one of those little things that I use. And this one, this is a stitch folk bag. I bought this one quite a while ago. Um, I think I showed this last time. This is Elizabeth Furness. I know Nicole, I think, Nicole's Needlework, she has started this one. Elizabeth Furness by Hands Across Sea. I don't think this is a brand new one, but it's one that people are picking up, and I think there's a sell. And on the attic's most recent floss tube, they show some things on the wall, some framed pieces on the wall, and this is one of the ones they show. So that was very inspiring. I love the grass, the, you know. It's not plaid, but it's kind of stripy. The sheep, red house. This, this speaks to all my... It does have some over one. I have a piece of sand dune. <laughs> I thought I didn't have any sand dune, but I've looked and I have some in other projects. Vintage sand dune by Lakeside. And I have the, I haven't put them in bags yet, but I have the Soit Alger, which is my favorite. I, well, my favorite is NPI, but <clears throat> a lot of the hands across the sea don't give an NPI uh, thread list. They just do either uh, Verisois, DMC, or uh, sometimes the 103s. So that could be a start. And then I have a couple of uh, smaller ones by Hands Across the Sea. 
This one I'm really tempted to start. This is Sarah Fletcher. Again, this is not huge. This one, now it's long, 251, but it's only 135 stitches wide. And I'm going to be using uh, Al or, uh, Needle and Flax Thornfield for this. I thought about doing it in DMC. I have the DMCs. I caved. I'm going to do it in Soie d'Alger. They're just not quite as bright. The yellow in the DMC is like, woo! <laughs> My son used to always say, he used to have so many sayings from baseball and all the baseball guys, you know. So if you'd make a sound like that, he's like, can you do it again? And you do it again. He's like, can you do it backwards? So you go, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> that was always the thing. Can you do that again? Can you do it backwards? <laughs> we have a weird family. <laughs> we have a weird family. Anyway, Sarah Fletcher. That's a possibility, and that's not huge, so five days, maybe I could get quite a bit done. The other one, my friend got this for me when she went to England, and that is Mary Wigglesworth. There's quite a few people working on this. I love it. Same sort of colors as, um, as Sarah Fletcher, there's no over one. Fear God, honor the king. So see, that line up there is kind of ghosty. Mary Wigglesworth, Hands Across the Sea. And again, I have a piece of, of Thornfield that I want to use. I ordered these a long time ago, so don't get your... I waited just like everyone else for needle and flax. It's worth it. And that one, I have the 103s, so that one I will do with the 103 Soie d'Alger. No, Soie, Soie 103, that's just the name of it. And the last possibility, there's a lot of possibilities. <laughs> the last possibility is one that um, at the, my stitching the other day, there's a gal working on this. She's Allie Stitcher, A-L-L. It's A-L-L-I or A-L-L-Y, I can't remember. Ali Stitcher on um, Instagram. And she's also working on a Reflet de Soie one. I can't remember the name of that. Something Beauclair, maybe. I can't remember. Don't quote me. Do you quote me? Because if you do, you're in trouble. Don't quote me. Um, she was working on that. But she's also working on this one, which is Jane Hopkins, 1875. And that beautiful, beautiful basket. And she's already done this flower here. It's gorgeous, just gorgeous. And for that one, I have it kitted. I have a piece of 46 count sand dune. Because I don't think this has, it might have a teeny bit of over one. I think it, it might have some satin stitches. Let's, let's just see. Um, you know, sometimes it'll say, um, Good for all, yeah. Predominantly work with cross stitch over two. Also some satin stitch. It's suitable for all needle workers. So because of that, I'm not a huge fan of doing over one on 46. Although I was generously gifted some Soisserfine, which is even a finer silk to use for over one. So I could do that, but I have a piece of 46 count sand dune that I'll do that on. Possibilities are endless. Okay, are you ready to switch gears? Oh my gosh, I'm at 49 minutes. Okay, this is gonna have to be just a parade, a quick parade. Because I wanted to show you things I wanna stitch that are patriotic, and then I have some things I've already stitched that are patriotic. Oh, I had one piece of haul. And this is um, homespun samplers and cross stitch, something like that on Facebook group. You have to be a part of the group. This was a special offering that was arranged through Hobby House Needleworks. And you got the bag. I ordered 
and this is fox and rabbit hog bristle that it came with and I ordered the cottons and you get this cute little no I already had that never mind I lied I think I could have ordered a floss ring thing so that was the only haul I got because obviously I have plenty mostly what I order now once in a while I'll order some linen but mostly I order threads if I need anything okay I did not get out all of the patterns for these but I got out some so this one is salute to Abigail this is blackbird this originally was a dime to stitch kit I didn't get out the pattern I think this is in one of their newer books I did it originally called for silk and I did change the red because the red that came with the kit was a little orangey so this is salute to Abigail blackbird I did this a few years ago oh gosh probably at least five years ago do I have a date on it yeah 1776 <laughs> that was not the date I did it <laughs> I don't see that I put a date on it Abigail Adams salute to Abigail so that is a piece that I took off the wall this one has been around for a long time. The, the, um, the frame is a little dusty. I think this is on Congress cloth. I did this a long time ago. I don't think I pulled the pattern for that. Some of these I still have the old patterns. Hold, please. No, I didn't find the pattern for that. But it, I'm not sure who did it, but it's on Congress cloth. Old, old, old with DMC. This one is kind of stuck in a frame. This was probably done on like 30 count. This, and I love how I put this in a big frame and it's just this one little sweet land of liberty. And this is um, by Heart and Hand, Sweet Land of Liberty. I don't know if this is available or not. I did this probably 25 years ago, at least, at least. Oh, no, longer than that. I think I probably did it in the early 90s. Um, okay, hold on. This is Little House Needleworks, Liberty. That's what the pattern looks like. This, I think, is still available. I think I saw it on 123 Stitch. Little House Needleworks. Just called Liberty 1776. Little House chart number 93. Love it. Um... What is this one called? Okay, my mind's a blank and I don't think I got out the pattern for this. There's a lot of people have done this recently. The chart I think is still available. I think originally it was a, um, I think originally it was a club kit. Oh, come on, Carol. If I think about it before the end, I'll let you know. If I don't, you'll probably hear some Jeopardy music or something. <laughs> this is a Blackbird, and this one I think is called United We Stand, and this is one that my friend Susan Aki's Yard Girl started, and then um, she didn't like the colors. She wanted it in a little bit different colors, so she gave it to me and I finished it. I think she did about half and I did about half. 2014. Well, that's a while ago. United We Stand by Blackbird. I think this might be in one of the books that's recently released. This is one of the few things that I actually have matted that I still like it matted. I matted it with red. I didn't mat it, but I had it matted. And this is um, City Stitcher. 
City Stitcher, um, Americana Sampler. Again, I did this a long time ago. That one's probably on, oh, who knows, 28 count. 1992, it's dated. 1992. <laughs> That's 30 years ago. <laughs> Still in good shape. For those of you who, do, you know, want glass, I don't put glass. 30 years, still fine. This is a Blackbird uh, Grand Old Flag, I think is the name of it. I didn't get out the chart. And this is part of the overdyed linen, so don't think it has a stain on it, because it doesn't. This one, I didn't put a date on this one. I think I, I, think I framed this myself, because it's not super tight. But I love that one. And then the last one, that's framed that I wanted to show you. This is called Liberty House. I think when I started doing floss tube, which is almost four years, believe it or not. In June, it'll be four years, who knew? Um, Liberty House by With Thy Needle and Thread, and I used to hang it, it used to hang behind me. And it's one that I got more questions about than any other, any other piece I've ever done. I love it. It has some kind of ghosty letters. That first band at the top is a little ghosty. But this one I completely used uh, all of the um, called for, which was 40 count Confederate gray, and then that's Weeks gentle and Gentle Art threads. Now, I say that, and I think I changed the color of the house, but I'm not sure what I changed it to. It's still one of my favorite. It hangs, a lot of these hang in my hallway because they're not, I try to put mostly reproduction samplers out in, in living room, dining room. I'm in my dining room. Okay, um, let me move these back over here. Otherwise we'll have some collisions. Okay, thank you for your patience. And then I got my dough bowl out. I love my sheep. I always have these out. This was a chalkware class I took years ago. We still lived in Kansas City. I just love this guy. It was chalkware and we painted it and did all the good stuff. I think the gal that, um, made the house, painted the house. I think she taught that class eons ago. So this is, this usually sits, and I have like a flag, small flag quilt in my kitchen and this sits on my kitchen table. But I'll go through each one of them. It's really heavy. I don't know that I got all of the patterns out. Um, for example, this is actually not patriotic, but it's a blackbird. It seems like it has a French name. It was definitely a kit. And then this one, which is uh, Land of Liberty by Brenda Gervais. With a little love this Uncle Sam. I mean, is he not the cutest? Land of Liberty. And I just put Rick Rack, kind of a bluish Rick Rack, and a little painted star. And it has a little dog over here with a flag. It's so cute. And then this one was a kit. Years ago, I was in a... Um, it was just a primitive club from Country Sampler years ago, early 2000s. And this was one of the kits, the old flag station. Somebody recently said they got this pattern on eBay and were stitching it, and I can't remember who it was. 
And it was by the pin keep and it's called the old flag station. And like I said, it was a kit. I filled mine with uh, walnut shells. He's cute. It's a little more gold, not as green as it looks in that picture, the house. 2018, that's when I made that. But I got the kit way before that. Um, something dropped. This one is by Lottie Da, called My Country. Love this. I could have stuffed this one a little fuller. When you use sawdust, though, you can just kind of poke it and it kind of like stiffens up a little bit. So it's my country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. And no, I'm not singing. <laughs> I used to be able to sing. Something happens to your voice when you get older and all of a sudden it's like squeaking. and whew, That's a scary thing. This is another blackbird and this was in one of the books. Land of Liberty, is that the book that came out with all the patriotic? That might have been the one that also had the um, Salute to Abigail, that first um, framed one I showed you. But I know this is in that book. I, I didn't get that book out, but there's a lot of things in there that I'd like to stitch. And then this one is, um, oh, I have, I have a couple that I got the patterns out and I don't have them. They must be, I, they must be somewhere else. This one is um, Plum Street, and this was also part of a club, Soul Sisters, but it's since been released. It's called Peace, Love, and Purpose. And, yeah, this was a club. Again, I did not stitch it in 1776. That's a really cute one. I think I change the color of the house maybe or maybe I changed the color of the flying geese quilt uh, triangles there because maybe they weren't showing up enough there's something I changed I remember that but it wasn't a big deal okay now I'm going to show you a few patriotic let me move this around that are kind of on my radar I'm going to show you two whips. I'm still here. When I was looking at whips to um, when I was looking at whips that I might want to do for my 5x5 five five mania, this was one of them. This is called Your Grand Old Flag by Samplers Not Forgotten. This was a kit with the country sampler um, conversion for the colors. I love it. I've seen it on their walls. I don't like mine. It's on tin roof, and it's just, you know, maybe I'll show it, and I'll be like, oh, it looks good in the picture. It's, it's, there's just not enough contrast or something. I don't know. I have quite a bit finished, but I'm going to restart it. I rarely do that. Rarely. I don't know who's sitting in this chair. Not me. <laughs> it doesn't look bad there. I, I don't know. I'm really conflicted on this one. But I don't want to put a whole lot more time into it. It does not look gray in person. In person, it's very green, very green. So um, I thought about restarting it on a piece of Steinbeck by Needle and Flax. And when I look at that with the colors, I, I just think, oh yeah, that would be better. The other alternative I have is um, I got a piece of Barb's Brew by R&R. &R. Barb's Blend, I'm sorry. 
which is their latest R&R. And it's a little bit lighter, but it still has that grayish, light gray feel. And I think I just would be much happier with it. Well, it's patriotic. It will probably go in the hallway or in my bedroom. So does it really matter? Should I just finish the one I... You know, maybe once I get a little further in the house, I'll love it. But I just really think I want to restart it. Can you hear? Can you hear that I'm conflicted? Yes. Anyway, and the other one that I'm conflicted about. Okay, just one second. I got this whole basket of stuff. It's here somewhere, I'm sure of it. It's Flag Folk is the one. And I started it on Murky. It's by Not Forgotten Farm. Flag folk. Somebody I recently saw is working on it. I just don't know if I like it on the murky. So I have a piece of Heroic by Picture This Plus. And Heroic has like spots of red and spots of blue. And I think I'm going to switch it to Heroic. You know, there is a little bit of a tan and I might have to adjust that. I, I rarely do this. I pretty much go with whatever the designers say because I can pick colors for a quilt all day long, but picking linen and floss colors, I'm, I just feel a little bit deficient. But I think on that heroic, it's, it might be a lot better than on the murky. I don't mind murky. I think murky has a purpose in some cases. It looks great, but I purposely started it in this light part, and when I get down here, I just don't think I'm going to like it. Maybe I will. I don't know. But there are a couple of my, I think my only two patriotic whips, and it's like, you know, it's time to stitch patriotic, and I have a lot of ones that I want to do, so why am I going to take time to do ones that I'm not happy with? Good point, Carol. Anyway, I'm going to flash through, I've already passed an hour, I'm going to flash through some Cute possibilities. Oh, I have one other thing <laughs> that I stitched. This, again, was a Blackbird tribute to Uncle Sam. This was actually a class that I took years ago from Barb and Alma. And it's adorable. And there's one. That's on Murky. And it's really cute on Murky. When I have this displayed, I just set this next to it. Kind of tilt it off like this. And then I have this cute guy, and I probably got him at a um, craft sale because he's actually made out of a clothespin. This cute little guy. Is he not adorable? And there's just a little base. You can see the, and the little base moves, so it's not like, you know. And I just set him next to it. And then I set the hat over here. How cute is that? gotta admit that's cute <laughs> that's cute okay I'm gonna run through some quickly 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 most of these are Brenda Gervais Plum Street or Blackbird this is one I want to do this is that mattress United we stand this at one point was a kit you know some of these could be my new start but I was anyway Join hand in hand again. Blackbird was a kit. That's a some similar fabric to the backing. Oops, here's what I'm trying to show you. See the backings kind of match, even though I bought them at different times. Well, here's the backing here, and here's the backing here. They both are like little gray checks. I'll get this confused, and then I'll be like, which one goes with which? But they're labeled, so we're good. Um, this one, why haven't I done this? Good question. Clustered Stars by Blackbird, a little needle book. And this all kind of goes together. And this one, actually, on the inside of the needle book, this was a, a club kit. 
the inside of the needle book actually has a flag. You put a flag. I don't have a picture of the inside. But the kit came with a little flag. Adorable. Why aren't they done? Good question. Um, sewing bird pocket. See all these little... So cute. Again, blackbird. Again, kit. With the red eagle. And then this one, which was Lady Liberty. A lot of these have been released. Some of them are in some of those books. I know. Noisy, noisy. Okay. Plum Street. My other whip I started was um, this one, which is Heritage Sampler. This was the first of the Plum Street trio. So this could even be my next whip tomorrow. Hmm. And then I have um, this Plum Street flag folk. I don't have that kid in. But I love that with the big flag and the sheep. Then the next one, what I, I'm not sure the order, but this was a new constellation. Plum Street. A lot of, a lot of these, or these of these three, they have a lot of over one. But it's so worth it. And then this last one was a um, dying to stitch club kit I believe might have been a retreat kit yes it was the 2020 spring that got cancelled because of COVID equality sampler again they're very similar they would look wonderful um, hanging framed next to each other but first you have to stitch them this one I get out every year and say, I'm going to do this one. This is Abigail Harrison by R&R, &R, and I've yet to do it. R&R &R Reproductions, Abigail Harrison. I have it all kitted with DMC. And originally I had, I think I had it kitted with... Um, this is how old this is. It's like 28 count. Maybe 30. I don't even have a needle in there. I need to take that needle out. But instead, I have a piece of 36 count Tundra by Lakeside that I'm going to use. So this was the original, which is a little bit more bluish, but they're both close enough. They're kind of a blue, green, gray. That could be my new start. Technically, that could be my whip. Actually, it's a restart, so... I don't want to do anything on 28 count anymore unless I was doing over one and that probably won't happen. But that's not difficult. Just come on, Carol. This is another one that's not really, um, to me this looks patriotic. It's not specifically patriotic, but this one with the, with with the needle too by Leela Studios. How wonderful is that? So many things. So many things. This is a great one. Brenda Gervais with the eagle. This is called Liberty for All. Love it. Plum Street, Liberty Inn. And the house is white, but when you do it on this color linen, now see, that's tin roof, but it doesn't look like that other piece that I have. Hmm. This is more brown gray. Liberty Inn. Um... 
I'm going to go through these very fast. Some are kitted, some are not. Some are salt boxes. This is was released at Market by Plum Street, this past market. I don't have any linen with it, but I did get the threads. I think I have them all. I might be missing one or two. Oops, hold on here. There we go. And this one is called God Bless America with the eagle in the red house. Hello. <laughs> Oh. Sorry for the glare. These are, This would be so easy. These are like the tomato keeper of the pins. They just go really fast. So come on, Carol. And they're done on uh, blah, 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 blah. winter brew, which I have. That quart of 36 count will be enough for finishing all of them. And then the USA... Adorable. Hello Summer by Plum Street with the flag. That would go fast. Your Grand Old Flag by Plum Street. This is their house series. Bless Our Land, Plum Street. Cute for the dough bowl. Blue Skin. I have it kitted with something, but I'm going to use that... Uh, Whatever that bluish uh, needle and flax piece. This is Nantucket Brew, but I don't think I'm going to use that. Maybe. We'll see. I like the idea of adding some blue linens to the dough bowl because I, I, and I have quite a few freebies. Years ago when I went to the Liberty Gathering, it was in Liberty, Missouri, so there were a lot of freebies that just said Liberty and or had flags on it. So, you know, just something cute and quick. Uh, Baltimore salt box. This is one that's over one. Uh, I don't know. We'll see about that. I love the box. But it would be just as cute on like 40 count over two. Stars and stripes. I've had this one kitted forever. <sighs> Stars and stripes forever. I think she's adorable. Brenda Gervais with a needle and thread. I'm filling a whole basket here. This one, Summer in Baltimore. See, that's the problem. These new ones come out and then we're like, oh yeah, I got a six of new ones, but there's so many good older ones. Am I yelling at you yet? Oh, I gotta hurry, my gosh. A minute, an hour and 17 minutes. Flag, flag flock. Did I already show you this one? Oh, I put it back in the basket. Okay, I put it back in the bag. These are cute. Where Liberty Dwells. Brenda Gervais. Here's another Lady Liberty. I love this one. Oh, just love her. She's adorable. Lady Liberty, Brenda Gervais. A hoopla, 4th of July. This one's called 4th of July. These go really fast. Strawberries and Stripes, Brenda Gervais. Another one that's like a small, like a hoopla. There's a flag at the top. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right up here. Basket full of summertime. I think my sister did this one. Brenda Gervais. And this one was a kit. Or maybe I got it kitted. I don't know. Who knows? This is all just stuff I need to stitch. This is Happy Birthday America. A lot of people have done this one. Set on the little cake stand. I think I'll just make a regular drum out of it. Because you get the you get the sampler fabric to put on the sides of it, and I think it would just be a cute drum. I understand the whole cake thing is like happy birthday. I get that. Um, I think there's a few in here. Oh, this is another Leela Studio. Oh, my friend did this one. 
she's almost done. She's going to wait and do the clock face on the 4th of July. And this one is Let Freedom Ring. That is a big project, but so gorgeous. I have a piece of vintage buttercream. She did hers on Fox and Rabbit Eureka, but the, my piece of Eureka is kind of orange. And it's 36 count, so I don't... Oh, I'd rather do it on 40. And then the other one, which is kind of... Well, this one, Brenda Jabay Seasons, that just came out at market. And then... Piece de, de Resistance is Land That I Love by Teresa Kogut. <sighs> this should be my new start for the last week. How many things have I said should be the new start? I'm done. <laughs> You're probably done. <laughs> oh my gosh, my husband's going to have a fit. Not really, but he just says, you do these long ones and they take forever. I'm like, I know. Anyway, I hope you all are doing well. I hope you have a good Saturday. It looks like it might rain here today, but we need rain. So um, hope you're enjoying some stitching on this weekend. And um, happy birthday to my grandson, who is nine years old today. Can't believe it. I was there when he was born, and I just cannot believe it's been nine years ago. He's a great kid. Love him to pieces. So anyway, um, I hope you all have a good weekend. Do some stitching, and I will see you in a couple weeks. Love you. Bye.